Thanks, everyone. Um, I suppose one of the benefits of using Office Connect for reporting is that it does allow for greater flexibility in terms of formatting and customization. So whilst your web reports are still a very good tool for reporting, they are a little bit rigid in terms of your formatting. So if you are building a report or, or if you have requirements to build a report that contain any complex calculations or even some specific reporting formatting requirements, I would definitely consider using Office Connect. Now, one of, in the, well, in the latest release of Adaptive Insights, there was a new feature added called dynamically update rows and columns. So previously, if a change was made to a child account in the model, let's say, for example, in the revenue account, you would have to manually go and update all of your reports and drag in the new account. And that can be a bit tedious, particularly remembering which reports you have to update. So with this new release or this new feature, it's made this process a whole lot simpler. So I will quickly demonstrate how you can do this. So for example, if we have a look at revenue, if I right click on revenue, we have the option to apply immediate children as group. So what that's going to do is it's going to apply these four child, child accounts to revenue into my report, or I can control click these four accounts, right click and apply selection as group. So this is what I've done to add my revenue accounts into my report here. What this now means is that if a new account underneath revenue is added to the model, it's a lot easier to, to update the report. So let's go and add in a new account really quickly, just so we can see how this works. So I'm going to go into modeling and very quickly, I'm going to add a new account to revenue. So just bear with me for a sec. So this was the, the feature I was uh, referring to earlier on that um, certainly should, should pay, pay close attention to this because uh, this is the, the recommendation going forward with setting up your Office Connect accounts because you will be adding new accounts over time. So um, you want to have that dynamically um, added as well. Yes, definitely. So now we can see I have added a new account underneath revenue. So I'm just going to go back to my Office Connect report. And there are a couple of steps that you need to do. So first of all, I'm going to select update elements. So now if you have a look on the left in the reporting pane here, what you should see is my new account appear underneath revenue. Just give it a few seconds. Yep, consulting revenue. Now, in order to get this into my report, I've just got to go into elements up the top here and update groups. Now we can see that consulting revenue has been added to my report. Now this works in the reverse as well. So if you've removed a child account, you would follow the same steps. So as Dave said, it's really useful. The one, uh, well, something to con definitely consider as well is that it does only apply now for new reports that you build. So if you, you want to go and update your existing reports, it would be a matter of replacing all of your existing accounts using the right click apply immediate children as group or control clicking and apply selection as group. So that's just something to consider that if you are wanting to reflect this behavior in your existing reports, you will have to go back and do a little bit of changes. Another useful feature, which I'm sure most of you already use in your Office Connect reports and your web reports, is the use of relative dates. So the date is relative to your reporting date. So the reporting date by default is today. However, you can change the reporting date by going into your workbook properties and changing the reporting date here. What this means or what re relative date means is that it just takes away the need to manually update the reporting month, month each month. So if, you're, if you have a report that you run each month on prior month, you don't have to go and change the prior month as you go. Another important feature is your labels. So I often use labels or the main times I use labels is to show 
a version or a time period. However, you can actually use them for a lot more. So you can use a label to show something that you've filtered on, for example. Something to keep in mind with the labels, however, is that you actually can't apply a label to a merged cell. So if we have a look at my row three here, which is a merged cell, I can't apply a label to it. So what I've done here is I've actually hidden a row and I've referenced my label here. So what I've done here, I've applied the label to a cell and I've hidden this row and referenced the label in here. And that th this is just a little tip, tip to get around some formatting issues. So it's all because of the merge cells. If I go into my label, what I've done here is I've added the text location. So this just sets some context and it's quite helpful for end users to understand what the filter is. So I've used the label type location, added it in and then added the text for location. I'm just gonna quickly re-hide this. If I turn linked cells on, so linked cells are another important feature and they are quite useful because what it's showing me here is it's highlighted all of the adaptive elements. So the first thing you'll notice is that my variance columns are not highlighted. And that's because these are actually calculations I've made in Excel rather than through adaptive. Something to keep in mind with your link cells, however, is that it's best practice to turn off before you make any changes to the report. So if I wanna go and add any further accounts or wanna make any, any more formatting changes, I'll turn it off before I do so. When you go and refresh your report, if you're just selecting the green play icon, you're only refreshing the current worksheet. However, if you select the drop down icon, you can control what you're refreshing. So you've got the option to just refresh your current worksheet or you can refresh the entire workbook. Now, another recent feature, whilst it's not in, wasn't in the latest release, I, I don't think, is the ability to suppress zeros or to hide zeros and blanks. So if we have a look in particular at rows nine, 10 and 11, you'll see that there's actually no data. So if I select hide zeros and blank and then refresh my report, what you're gonna see is that these three rows are hidden. And to undo, I can simply just deselect the property. Another, well, another benefit to Office Connect is the ability to use all of your Excel functions. So for example, copy and paste is quite often used. However, there are two options you have for copy and paste. You've got the standard copy and paste functions or you have the adaptive copy and paste. Now I am going to quickly demonstrate the difference between the two because they are quite important. Let's copy this entire worksheet. So if I right click on the sheet, I'm going to select move or copy, move to and create a copy. And what you'll see is that my refresh icon is disabled. Now this is because when you use the standard copy and paste functions, it doesn't copy the adaptive elements. In comparison, if I right click and now use the move or copy report with the adaptive symbol, same process, move to end, create copy, you'll notice that my refresh icon has been enabled now. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are using the copy and paste function, that if you are expecting to use the, all the adaptive functions, that you will need to use the specific adaptive copy and paste. Now I'm just gonna quickly delete these two pages. When it comes to filtering in Office Connect, you have two options. So we have workbook filters and we have worksheet filters. What you can't actually see here, or I did mention it before, is that I actually have a workbook property filter for location. So if I go into my workbook properties, and into my filters, you'll see we have two locations here to select. I've got Australia and United States. I have selected Australia, and what this means is that any worksheet added to my report is now going to be filtered on Australia. However, I can actually select United States as well, 
and filter for them both at the same time, which I believe is something that you can't actually do in web reporting. So it, if you are interested in filtering on two, for example, two locations, definitely consider using Office Connect. So just to reiterate, my workbook property filter is going to apply to all of my worksheets. Instead, if I went into filters, I could apply just a worksheet filter. So this is going to be specific to the, to the worksheet that I set the filter on. So this can either be applied through the workbook, sorry, through the reporting pane on the left, or I can go into my toolbar and select worksheet filters. Alternatively, you also have the option to repeat reports or re repeating reports. Repeating reports, so what this means is that I can take my current worksheet and I can repeat this worksheet based on a, on a selected element. So let's do this for example. So I'm going to select my repeating reports. I'm gonna choose an element type. So for this, I wanna select a custom dimension and I've got location. Keeping in mind that we're already filtered on Australia, I'm going to select the states. So what I'm expecting here is I'm expecting a new worksheet for each state. While this is loading, if you have a look on the left in the filters, you'll see that for my WA sheet, it's actually got a worksheet filter for WA and that's the same for Vic and so on. You'll also notice that my label at the top has also reflected my repeating element, which is definitely helpful as well. Now, something to keep in mind with repeating reports is that you sort of have to treat each sheet or each repeater as its own report. So what I mean by this is that if you wanna make a change to your main sheet, you would then have to make the change to each individual tab, which can be a little bit tiresome. So what I would recommend, well, firstly would be, if you are gonna use repeating reports, I would be repeating my reports at the latest possible time. So once you've finished building your entire report, then make the repeating reports. But if you do want to make a change and you've already made the repeating reports, what I would do is I would remove all my repeating reports, make the change to the main sheet, and then redo the repeating reports. 